My guest today is Jen Bailey Hobbs. She is a retreat host, international breathwork instructor, cold water immersion therapist, restorative yin yoga teacher, and Reiki master. So she's all about all those powerful healing modalities. We're going to get into her story today of living a very high stress life for a very long time and what that did not only to her health, but also to her psyche and her soul and how she was able to maneuver slowly out of that after, you know, all the diets, all the Western medicine approaches didn't work. And we're going to go through one by one, each of those modalities and what they did for her and where she's at now to be able to be bringing these to others at her seedlings retreats, which she holds in Wales in the UK and also in Italy. So um, if that interests you, definitely check out the link at seedlingsretreatsandholidays.com. Um, Jen is also in the Source app, which was formerly known as the Breath Source app. So if you heard the Travis Steffens episode about his Breathwork app, Jen is one of the Breathwork masters in that app. Um, so we'll, we'll put the link to the Source app below as well. And I'm just so excited for you to hear Jen's story because it is like, a huge issue, a huge issue right now is like so much unhealed mm, relationship with self and chronic stress, chronic fight or flight. And then we wonder why we're gaining weight and feeling horrible. And like, we've got to get to the true deeper healing. And many of the modalities that she uses are also modalities that I use. And I, because they work, because they work and you'll see it through her story. So we'll go ahead and dive in. Here is Jen Bailey Hobbs. All right, Jen, my soul sister from over in the UK. <laughs> I'm so excited to dive into your journey today because your story is so needed to be shared because as you know now, there are so many in your boat. It's like the, you know, the, I'd say for most holistic health professionals, what we are dealing with now is a story very similar to yours in terms of what's going on with people's physical health, mental health, all of it. So I was wondering if we could kick this off before we get into the awesome gifts that you're bringing to the world now in terms of, you know, all of your different modalities, retreats, all of that. I was wondering if we could start with how you got here and the low that you had to go through to learn about all of these things. Oh, gosh, I think there's been several lows, actually, to be fair. I, I always like to think it's like 30 years of making mistakes. <laughs> and then as a consequence of making mistakes and having really deep quite dark experiences as um then you just come out the other end stronger um mm -hmm. the same person but just maybe wiser with more boundaries and a little bit more understanding about what you need as a human mm -hmm. so um i talk about my story and i think it probably started when um i was 32 i had a four-year-old and a six-year-old and my husband who i loved very much at the time went out one night came back the next day and didn't love me anymore and literally said a week later, I'm leaving. And um, so literally I had gone from this perfect little nucleus family, um, just decided to put the children into school. We just bought a new home. And wow. then suddenly that whole rug was taken from underneath me. Right. And, you know, it happens. We, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it happens, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, and I think as a consequence of that, rather than falling apart, because I'm very much a case of crack on now, put your big girl pants on, we're going to deal with this. I went into fight and flight. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably can safely say for 20 years, I was in fight and flight. And that was a case of need to provide for my children, need mm -hmm. to get the best career, need to ignore all the signs that my health needed looking after because I've got to care, I've got to care for my friends. I was that matriarch. So my friends would come to me, my family would come to me um, and there was never any time for myself. So mm -hmm. my career was blossoming. Absolutely. And I'll become before I retired a senior police officer. So you can imagine, um, the, you know, that the stresses that came along just with that role, um, a female in a male dominated environment being in charge, critical incidents, but also um, just the decline in my own well being and my own health mm -hmm. and not even realizing really that I was not my best version. Um, mm. And I was just getting um, on my back and it was showing through my back, which is quite interesting. So between the age of 20, 32 and 45, I had eight major spinal operations. Wow. Still didn't, still didn't listen to my body thinking, OK, then we'll get on and we'll move on. Next operation, wow. let's get on and let's carry on getting a degree, getting promoted again, putting my kids through all this, doing this, doing that. And, um, and then eventually, seven years ago, this is a very much a whistle-stop tour, seven years ago, um, 
it was so much more than physical. It became a mental and I was really depressed and I had massive high function anxiety and I literally couldn't leave the house. And I had like nine months off work and um, had put on a lot of weight because I used food as my crutch, food as my dopamine. Um, and yeah, and so then that's when it had to stop. I thought right now, this is the time for me. How do I heal? And as a consequence, I was introduced to a lot of different modalities, met some amazing humans. And I've been on that journey ever since of trying to become my best version, better than yesterday. Always doing my best each day, even though your best could be slightly different to yesterday's best, um, because every day is different. And just being just so much more aware mm. of what I need. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so and, as, and now I've got a really beautiful, successful, well, left policing, which I loved. You know, it made me, broke me, made me. Um, got a lovely wellness, organic wellness business where I'm sharing everything that's helped me. And I make stone down. Just throw that in, just a hundred and so wow. many pounds down. Right, so, right. And wow. no back pain, no back pain. No back pain. Mm. Okay, Let's, thank you so much for sharing <laughs> this. There's a lot there. I, lot there. <laughs> no, yeah, there's so much, so much we can dig into. And I totally relate. I was 32 when my whole world just dissolved mm. too, right? I think of it as like a, a caterpillar going into a cocoon and literally dissolving. Like everything that you think you have all put together in life is good. Yeah. It's just like you just dissolve into nothing, mm. you know? And I was the same age as you when that happened. So I so relate. Had kids about the same age as yours, just a couple older ones too. I got four. Um, and I want to hit on, okay, this approach that you first took that most people take, right? Of, okay, I've got this low back pain, the weight, you kind of notice the weight is coming on, but that seems unrelated, right? It's just like, yes. you know, um, but you still, you've got this pain, you're gaining weight. And what was your approach besides the low back pain? You know, um, did you go through any other Western medicine type, you know, approaches to try to resolve what you were going through? So the weight or the depression or everything or yeah um, I suppose that. yeah so I've always I've been a cereal diet a dieter right you name it I've tried every single diet right. I've got every book going and um but never really got to the root cause mm -hmm. and for me the root cause was self-love mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. only now that mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. that I cared and I can remember once I was having counseling after my husband left and I can remember the counselor saying to me why do you put your why do you feel you're so unimportant that you can't find half an hour a day to exercise but you can find so much time for everybody else I thought oh, gosh that is mm. really quite but mm -hmm. literally I was the bottom of the food chain and always last right. about the food chain the fact that I wasn't even on the first run of the food chain everyone used me as the first run to step on me to get to that first run that's how I it was mm -hmm. when I look at it now mm -hmm. but um so the medicines I just tried every single diet um and I'd lose three weight three persona then gain mm -hmm. four, lose mm -hmm. four stone, then gain five. And mm -hmm. it was just a complete roller coaster because I never got addressed, never yeah. gripped or understood that that was, I was using food as for my, for my hit, my dopamine hit, because I yeah. hadn't really embraced the exercise. I hadn't really embraced all the other modalities, which I now really are part of my life. But also, um, yeah. And I just, yeah, I think that's probably the, the main the main answer to that question, really. Yeah. And I, and I did take medication when I first went off um, work and I had CBT, so that's Western medicine, mm -hmm. and that really mm -hmm. helped me. Made yeah. me dig really deep and I was on um, some antidepressants for a short while. Mm -hmm. um, but now, gosh, now if I knew what I knew then, I didn't need the antidepressants. Right. I just needed. I just needed to move. I just needed to expose myself to the cold. I just needed to understand how to breathe and regulate my own nervous system. But at the time, it was really important. And I didn't need that then at the time. And some people really do need it now because, but what I'm saying for me, if I knew what I knew then, I would mm -hmm. have done a completely different path. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. It's whenever I look at like food addictions, overeating, that kind of emotional mm. eating or alcohol issues. Um, I always look at it as like, well, that's just a symptom of the problem. That's not yes. the problem. Like you don't have an emotional eating problem. You have some deep seated things going on probably both in your physiology and in your psychology that need to be addressed. And that's a symptom of that. Right. But, and then we add stress on top of it by I've got to stop doing this, stop overeating, stop drinking alcohol, just stop. And it's just more inner bully, inner critic, you know, it's like, you can't win, right. You're already being so hard on yourself. 
and uh, re- abandoning yourself like crazy. And that's why these things are happening. And then you're mean to yourself for trying to help yourself feel better and never getting to the root of the problem. So it's I'm just so, a, it's just a, you know, it's just a big cycle, isn't it? That just right. gets worse and worse and worse. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and as a child, you know, and I love my family very much and my parents and, but, you know, I was, I did feel fat as a child, you mm-hmm. know, from maybe some form, some beliefs as well. My mum was always on a diet from an early age. And so when I was probably 10, I felt that I was overweight then. So, you know, I really didn't have much of a chance as an adult because when I was right. slim, I thought I was fat. So right. it becomes a self-fulfilling right. prophecy. So it wasn't until I started loving myself. And that's mm-hmm. not like in a vain way, even though I shouldn't link loving yourself and vanity. So that's still me dealing with my own perceptions because actually we should all love ourselves and it's not vain at all. Right. Um, but it's um, it's about that internal narrative, isn't it? And the fact yeah. that, you know, there's just so many really significant things that have happened in the last couple of years that have really helped me understand that I don't need food. Yeah. To bridge, yeah. To bridge that gap, to yeah. make me feel loved, to make yeah. me feel heard. It sounds like both of us, you know, the predominating story, because I so relate to all of this, was I'm I'm not good enough and I don't matter, like pretty much at all. I'm not good. And when you're, mm. you're provi- you know, prevailing lens for life is that you're not good enough in any way, mm. shape or form. How are you ever supposed to truly be happy when the inner bully is constantly saying like, you Mm -hmm. can't do things, you actually don't even matter here, you know, make sure that you give, 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 give so that you can feel some sense of worth, which will never, Mm -hmm. ever work, right? You'll always need more. And you're not actually capable of achieving the real deep things that you want to achieve or having the things that you really want to have because you're not good enough. Okay, so let's if we can let's play with the healing journey of jen Mm -hmm. kind of one by one can you take us through this journey of the deeper healing where you started and let's let's go through this together so what would you consider your first step of true deeper healing besides cbt i know can be very helpful but you know beyond that yeah i think the so when i was so it's probably before I went off sick from work. So I was in the policing and it's, you know, uh, and policing is really good and very supportive. However, um, when it comes to mental health, I have personally felt that it's um, at that time, you know, seven, 10 years ago, it still had a long way to go in relation to understanding, you know, mental health. And so if I had a broken limb, it was absolutely, I had more confidence to say, I need to take some time out because I've broken my foot. So what happened is I broke my foot. So my exercise stopped. And so my mm-hmm. my um, my dopamine was dropping. My serotonin totally. wasn't being replaced. So that started. Then I had a cancer scale on my finger. And mm-hmm. then um, uh, my foot was, um, I needed some surgery. I needed some surgery on my finger. And then insomnia kicked in. So I had these three physical things, which I was able to hide behind literally Mm. and I was Mm. then said look I'm not well enough to come to work I need to heal my physical ailments but then after they had all healed I've still felt really unwell and I thought gosh I'm really unwell here you know I had and and it was when everything was perfect in my life so I'd you know I've been through I've been on my own for 13 years I've been a single parent Mm. I got promoted I had my own home my kids were settled in university and then I met Chris who I'm now married to I met manifested this most amazing human uh, and then we had been married and I, but I'd wake up every day and everything was perfect and the sun would be shining, but I, it was so heavy. I was mm. so slow and I was crying mm. all the time and I just mm. couldn't really function. And um, so to start with, first admitting that's how I felt was the yeah. first part of my healing. Yeah. Secondly, going to the doctors was a really difficult thing for me. And I just said, look, I just need a month off just to mend. And then the, and the doctor was amazing. And she said, you will go back to work when I tell you you're well enough. I'm taking all that responsibility off you. And she said, I blame your husband. I said, what do you mean you blame my husband? She said, because you've been on fight and flight for 20 years. You're now in a safe place. Your body's now able to heal. Mm. And I thought, my God, this woman's amazing. And actually, it's mm-hmm. so true. Mm-hmm. So I was in a safe place to heal. So that's when I started just to be kinder to myself, just accept the fact that I needed some time nice. just to be yes and my mother always used to say to me Jen just be stop planning just enjoy the moment and what had happened in my life and I don't know whether it's society is such but I was constantly striving for the next thing yeah. I'll be happy when I've lost three stone yeah. I'll be happy when I get promoted I'll be happy yeah. when I get my degree I'll be happy when I marry the man of my dreams then all these things happened because I'm driven and I make things happen and then suddenly you get to, well, I've done all these things. I'm still, you know, 
you so can't buy happiness you see them happiness is just and happiness actually to me now isn't rolling around laughing it's just peace yeah. it's just being able to sit with yourself yeah. and just yeah. have yeah. some compassion yeah anyway, that's my, um so yeah that's in the deep healing so I was going on a few retreats because I had some time out of work and I thought I really do need to find some modalities something for me to help to heal me and I was at this retreat and it was a beautiful space and I thought, gosh, I can do this. I want to be able to provide a real safe space for people to heal. And that for me was like the first mm. light bulb moment thinking, OK, what I'm learning, this is for a reason, for the greater good. There's some sunlight. There's some light coming through now. I see. And so I went I was there and someone recommended I mean, no, I went for card reading and the, the card mm. reader said, you're a healer. I said, oh, what? She said, you're surrounded by angels, whether you believe this or not, but you're surrounded by protection and you have got amazing healing powers. You need to use this healing power to heal you, but also others. Mm. So I went back to the retreat and then the lady that was giving me treatment said, I told her the story. She said, well, I'm a Reiki master. I'll teach you. And I think, God, this is random. I've never met anyone that does Reiki in my life. So she treated and she taught me. And then Mm. I started to heal myself with the Reiki and Reiki is just self-love. Reiki is just an exchange mm. of energy. If the child falls over, the first thing you do is hug them, touch their injury, you know, mm. and it's just learning about loving yourself. That mm. was the first part. And then I went into sort of mindfulness because I thought my brain and my brain is still super active. I've probably got some ADHD along the line, which I don't even realize I have, but it's always busy. I always feel like I can either take on the world or I'm in a coma. There's no really any in between. And um, and then I started with the mindfulness and the meditation and then the breath mm. evolved as a consequence and then the cold water. So that's been sort of the series of the healing mm. and the modalities that I've been embraced with. And since I've discovered that, yeah, I'm able to just find a way just to balance my mental health now. And I always knew that my weight loss would come. I always knew that that would follow, but I just needed to do the inner stuff first. I needed mm-hmm. to heal my inside first. Mm-hmm. I needed to reconnect my heart and my mm-hmm. mind. And then I just knew. And and the way I look at it now is, because, you know, eight stone is a significant amount of weight. Yeah. And, and I'm just now so grateful for my eight stone myself when I was eight stone heavier and I'm so grateful for my body when it's heavier because it was so kind to me I didn't have any diabetes I didn't have any high blood pressure I didn't have anything wrong with me and I feel that my body really looked after me then just waiting for Mm -hmm. me to catch up and care and now my mind and my heart has caught up and cares about my body and this it's just fallen into alignment yeah I'm working considerably hard but I the weight has just dropped off and I've got an amazing coach as well um but yeah so that's been Mm. sort of the healing so it's just so much there again isn't there (laughs) yeah I mean you said something so profound is like you learned that happiness wasn't what you say rolling around laughing happiness is peace you know Mm. and what I hear is from a spiritual level to a physical level with your body you came back into peace and it's amazing what happens how much more ease like like from from relationships with anyone to relationship yeah. with yourself to how you navigate yourself moment by moment to mm. to losing weight to making eating choices when you have that internal peace you find so much more ease oh. and i want i want to um kind of backtrack a little bit into you know reiki i love i love that i love that you said it's just love right and that mm. that, that healing touch that gentleness which you know, for someone who's in fight or flight, that is so important. You know, I, I didn't uh, choose Reiki as a modality, but when I was deep in my fight or flight stages, also, I knew that I needed, especially because I was single, I knew that Mm. I needed loving touch. I knew I needed loving touch and I didn't want to go just date to try to find that. That's not really loving touch. That's like a whole different energy. Right. Mm. And so I was very proactive about massage you know, mm. with very safe, safe massage therapists. Like really, I was like, I need, I need like healing, loving touch, you know? So I, mm. and I still do that regularly. I, th- I, I think it's a proactive, so uh, yeah, but just self basic self-care at 41 Touchy. now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, then we moved into mindfulness and meditation. Okay. So this is meditation is part of my coaching, right? So we mm-hmm. have a morning routine and it's just 10 minutes is all I ask. Cause that's what they found in the research. People will actually stick to, but even with 10 yeah. minutes, especially for someone who 
is in this chronic busy mind, go, 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 go. Mm. Like my worth is in doing right. And I'm so uncomfortable with myself if I'm not doing and achieving, like it's Mm. my self-worth is now at question. And I'm so, you know, now that's allowing feelings to come up that I'm very uncomfortable with anxiety or, you know, uh, self-abuse and and cruel thoughts, you know, self-judgment. Like now I have to sit and look at that. So there's no way, right. And so, you know, especially this, you know, potential ADHD type uh, mind that you have, which I totally relate to. I've been told I have ADHD a million times by people yeah. <laughs> in the, in the and, field. And I don't want to, yeah. And I don't want to undermine that because I know a lot I, of people that have got it really badly and I'm just really right. busy. Mind, Same here. You know, it's really, really busy, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, what was, what, I guess, nuggets do you have to share with someone who's in the busy mind and, and mm. meditation just sounds like, nope, no, thanks. No. And I, for to me, so as soon as I was introduced to meditation, I used to actually leave the room. It was for me, it was like, no way, this is absolute crap. There's waste I, of I can't time, do it. waste it's of time. Waste of time. <laughs> I haven't got time. I, I, there was always a guilt thing about rest because, you know, mm-hmm. and, and so now I'm learning that rest actually is equal, is just as equally as important, if not more important than doing. Mm-hmm. We're human beings, not human doings. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I do yoga and then it comes to meditation, I'll just get up and go. I couldn't even sit through the meditation. It mm. caused me so much overwhelm because my mind was, mm-hmm. this is rubbish, got to do that, got to do this. Mm-hmm. However, when I was introduced to the breath as well, and then just you, and understood that actually your mind mm. is a busy, complex, beautiful machine, and it's actually busy all the time. Yeah. But as soon as you recognize the thoughts and then come back to the breath, thank you, thoughts, goodbye, thoughts, go away, come back to the breath then things start to just slow down. And when you can regulate your nervous system through the breath, activating the vagus nerve, bringing you into that parasympathetic state, things start to calm down. And so now um, I can meditate, not with a clear mind. I'm always busy, but Mm -hmm. I understand and I'm compassionate and I'm kind to my Mm -hmm. mind. I say, thank you, thoughts. You can wait. I know you're there. Yes, it's just like an irritating sibling. Yeah, I know you're there. You have some attention later. Then you just come back to the breath and that mm-hmm. sensation and the visualization. And so if somebody's thinking, I really want to try this meditation because I hear it's really good for you and everyone that's anyone is meditating, just have some simple breath work techniques nice. and recognize that those thoughts are there and be kind. And just and I just visualize the thoughts just floating away like little white clouds in a bright blue sky or they say they're envelopes don't open the envelope. We don't really care what's inside. Don't give it a backstory. Just let it float away and then just come back to Mm -hmm. your internal narrative in and out, noticing Mm -hmm. your body and just trying to connect your mind, your head, your mind to your body, because we're so live in our heads, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we just try and connect the two. And once you can connect the two, you just notice how everything slows down. And if you can just do it for two minutes, it doesn't even have to be 10 minutes. If you can just start some sort of really yeah. beautiful ritual before you even get out of bed, I say to my clients, most beautiful, simple breath, four in for the nose, six out for the mouth. We can do eight in, 10 out, whatever you're comfortable with. I'd never say less than three because it's going to be too rapid. You just mm. want to just slow the breath down because we're a nation, as you know, of chronic overbreathers. We're in mm-hmm. hyperventilation, dysfunctional mm-hmm. breathing all the time because we're talking like I'm breathing really fast now because I'm chat, 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 chat. But mm-hmm. if we can just slow it down, breathing in through the nose and out through my mouth, just and loads of people say, God, I didn't realize I could feel that calm. Never felt like that in my life. And I said, Well, that's how we should be feeling. But life mm-hmm. is just so busy. And we haven't evolved, have we, since for 200,000 years. We just need to be in nature. We just need to be, we need to rest. And we just need to have some self-care. Mm-hmm. And then things mm-hmm. will slow down. So give it a go and just keep, and it's not something you can learn overnight. I still have to practice. And there's some days my yeah. mind is like, bang, bang. And yeah. there's other days I'm just Zen. People call me Zen Jen, but there's, trust me, there's a lot of days I'm not Zen, but I have to really right. breathe. Same. And for me as well. And that's what the ice, you know, I've got an ice pack. Um, t- t- I'm very fortunate in the garden. I've got a mach- chilling machine so I can get it down tonight to five, to five degrees, which is super cold because tap water is sort of 18, um, 15 to 18. And, you know, you have no other option to have silence because all you can think about is just survival when you're in right. there. And right. that and that gives me real peace. Mm. So that helps mm. me. That's when I can really meditate. So just yeah. keep sticking with it and just try some simple breathwork techniques to distract you from your thoughts. And when you realize your thoughts are trying to pull you away, you're being mindful. You've got it. Mm-hmm. You're meditating. 
you know, that is a sign of success that you actually are meditating because you're being aware that you're being distracted and you're just coming back to the moment, being distracted, coming back. So Thank that's you my tip. Sharing. Yeah, I think that there's a misconception that meditation means you're just not going to, you're going to go mindless, you know, thoughtless mm. for the whole I time. Wish. And I'm like, mm. that doesn't happen ever. I have never, I've been meditating consistently no. for, I don't know, maybe seven years now or something like that. And I've never had a meditation session where I didn't think for the full time that doesn't happen. Mm. It's just awareness, awareness. Yes. And I do think that is such a powerful tip to go into breath first. You know, I have um, like right now I have a client who has definite ADHD. And for him, he has started meditating after exercise, right? Cause he's mm. getting that dopamine regulation. He went into fight or flight and it can kind of bring you back in a calm, kind of like the ice, the, the yes. cold can do as well, you mm. know? So, um, if you haven't gotten into cold plunging, I mean, what we're going to go into that in a little bit here, but that, I mean, for me is, has been, it's one of those modalities that's like sacred to me. It's special to me um, because it helped me so much during the deepest trauma fight or flight mm -hmm. period of my life. Like, it's just like, thank you so much. Like I will always have like a, the deepest gratitude for what yes. the cold has done for mm -hmm. me, because when you get past that freak outness and I can't do it and oh my gosh, no way. And blah. And you build that relationship with yourself to just mm -hmm. go in oh. breath and mm. feel it and feel it. It's, it almost gets orgasmic feeling for me. Yeah, like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Totally. Right. Yeah. And, and it changes your relationship with stress forever. And it does. Mm. Like I always say that my, my meditations go cosmic when mm. I'm in the cold because I'm out of like my worldly, like I have to email somebody. I forgot to text my client. Mm. Like that kind of stuff will pop up in regular meditation. Sometimes like, Oh totally. crap, you got to text that person. And, blah. and like, Oh, you're supposed to switch the laundry before you meditated. And like, you know? mm. And like, yeah. that doesn't happen in the cold. Yeah. I am gone. I am blasted. It's like, if anything comes in, it's like almost, you know, like I'm on plant medicines or something level, you know, yeah. but usually it's pretty thoughtless in there. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, so breath, let's go back to breath as, you know, using this, not only in general, as you said, for bringing us out of anxiety, which I do all the time on podcasts, by the way, mm. because I'm very extroverted. I'm very social. So I get like really excited. Like I just went to a biohacking conference and I'm like, I'm like on crack cocaine when I'm around yeah. people. I'm like, <laughs> we had like a dance. I'm like going I'm freaking saying, bananas. I'm like, just so like, you know, and so I have to, and it helps just that right into my rib cage that Mm. big 360 degree breath and then it's just like you're like whoa here I am and so yeah. since you are a breathwork instructor and you you know you are in the breath source app which listeners here have heard Travis Steffens the founder of the breath source or it's, mm. did they change it to the source now Is it's it the source, called source now yeah it's, it's called source, source. okay yeah um, so, you know, you're, you're, so if you guys have that, or if you wanted to check out the source app, you know, Jen is in that app. And so I was wondering, you know, you mentioned maybe four, uh, six, four and six so breathing in yeah. for a count of four out for yeah, what would be your, really, for yeah. me, that tends to be my go-to because it is quite okay. simple and very simple, discreet breath to share as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, and you want, when people are being first introduced, you know, just the best straightforward four, four in, four out is very, very, right. just the fact that you become, you're connecting your mind and your body and you're just noticing when you're breathing in, always through the nose, always breathing in through the nose. That's how I practice it because mm -hmm. it's all about slowing everything down. You know, there is mouth breathing exercises, but I'm not into mm -hmm. all the activating stuff. I just want that slow stuff because mm -hmm. that's what I self need mm -hmm. and it's just taking that beautiful breath. but just noticing how when you're breathing in through the nose how your belly your ribs at the bottom are expanding out mm -hmm. then your diaphragm is following your torso is expanding and then your lungs have no other option than to follow it's a bit like when you pick a cup up and there's a coaster you know if your diaphragm stretching your lungs have no other option and so you're sending that breath really deep into your lungs and because we do so much talking so much podcasts so many telephone calls um, you know, we're just breathing in through the mouth and then we're just taking it into our shoulders and just not getting deep, mm -hmm. deep into the lungs. So by breathing in through the nose, which I always encourage, you're taking in at least 20% more oxygen. Nice. What it also does, it activates this beautiful chemical called nitric oxide, which dilates your veins capillaries, enabling you to absorb more yes. oxygen. 
just yes. a winner winner chicken dinner you know it's just totally. it's just phenomenal it's total um so yeah i do a four in six out also like breath holds i find them so i don't know if you obviously probably like them as well super super relaxing but you have to be really careful that comes with health warning you can't do that if you're pregnant or if you've got unregulated blood pressure or any heart issues but the breath just slowing down and just having some breath holds is really powerful because what that does it helps to bring up your tolerance to co2 co2 is equally as important for, in yeah. that system as oxygen is and I always I always thought before I studied it and it's like you need to get rid of it get rid of it but actually right. you really still need a certain amount in your body to help oxygenate your blood um and so when I'm taking people into the ice it's definitely four in six out um and okay. also then sort of some beautiful things like four in five out holding for one it's a very simple mm. box breath which is really world known um and and I do a beautiful triangular breath so like five in five out five hold and with visualization as well. So quite simple. I try and keep it really simple because I want people yeah. to breathe with me and be able to remember them before right. they go into that conference, before they have that difficult conversation, before they even get out of bed in the morning, before the kids wake them up. Let's just have a really simple yes. breathwork technique that can just really settle you for the day. And just, and I was also asking people just to step into their own internal world. So when you're finding that time to breathe, just check in on yourself. How am I feeling today? Yes. What What do I need today to be my yeah. best version? Because we're all we spend our whole life asking everyone else, "How are you? How are you?" But when do you actually look really deep inside and think, "What does Tara need today? How do I feel?" Just exactly. scan your body. Because we just don't do it. And maybe if we started the day off like that, then we'd be a little bit more self-aware. So you're not more, exactly. you know, and, and yeah. So there's a few simple ones which are all on the breath source, and it's just an amazing um, mm -hmm. app full of really really talented breathwork instructors all very different um and i use it a lot for um sort of managing perimenopause menopause i've helped nice. it for younger people for brides i've used it for separation anxiety for young children because obviously nice. after covid lots of children mm -hmm. went to school then suddenly they came home and they were there for two years and then mm -hmm. obviously having to go back to school um mm -hmm. i just used it for lots of business people that are really high functioning they just need some coping strategies and it's just really good for help. It's helped me as well to just become more aware of my own self and on my own weight loss journey as well. Okay. So now with all of these modalities, like you've, you know, come into yourself, you've explored Reiki, breath, mindfulness. I hear some yoga in there, cold, and you're getting into the roots of connection to yourself, really. Let's bring it back to that moment that you had at that retreat where you, you know, you felt compelled. You, I know that feeling. I, I, I wish for everyone to, to have that feeling in their life. And I really think that as you embark on the healing path, like you embarked, you went to a retreat. You started doing these things. Once you start embarking, making decisions to get on the healing path, I really think that's when those things start to come in, right? So it's because you were already honoring your soul and what you felt compelled to do for yourself, right? And then that call came in. It was like, this is you, baby. This is what you're here, you know, to bring forth, at least at this point in your life, maybe forever. Mm -hmm. We'll see. And so, and so you're here now. So can you tell us about your retreats that you're doing? Yeah. So, um, obviously just going back to that time when I thought I can do this this is what I really want to do and it's quite interesting because I actually told a lady that was there and then last year she joined me in Italy when I was running a retreat so been following my story and that was so nice that she was there that moment I said this is what I'm going to do and we're talking Aww. about like eight, eight years ago but yeah so what happened is is we um, moved from where we lived before I'd finished policing and then we set up um, seedlings and we moved to West Wales which is a part of the UK that's beautiful and, we're, and we live opposite the sea and it's just a just an absolute awesome space mm. and we've just set up this beautiful organic business where I'm just sharing the breath and the mindfulness and the ice water and I'm also um, running beautiful wellness retreats as well and we do day events and weekend mm. events and also mm. weekly long events and we're off to italy on saturday with 16 oh wow humans taking them to italy for six days of i'm not a yoga teacher I, i've learned restorative yin which i love which i use with sound and breath i did that in costa rica in december and um, that mm. was a fabulous experience um yeah but what's been lovely is i started my business three years ago and i was eight stone heavier three years ago and i mm. and i didn't Put off starting this healing journey I didn't put off setting up my business I didn't mm -hmm. normally I'd say I will do that when 
And I thought, mm. no, I'm going to I'm going to start my business. And I've just explained to all my clients that I'm a work in progress. People know my story. And I've said, mm-hmm. I will become my healthiest version. And they've just seen me each year. So each year they're coming back and they're going, wow. You know, and there's some of them that are going to come back to Italy. They haven't seen me for a year. And I'm like, I'm five stone down since last year. Um, and so that is also a um, really beautiful part of the journey. And so I'm inspiring mm-hmm. so many other people through the weight loss as well, because it can be a really dark place to be. But yeah, but my retreats aren't about the weight loss. My retreats are about just finding time to be and to just nourish yourself. And that can be in any capacity. And most people don't really know what they need until they arrive. Yeah. Um, like I've got this call in, I feel her vibe. Um, I understand that I need something. I don't know what it is. And they come right. and then they just have some peace. And mm. in the peace, the answers mm. come. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I love that so much. And so Italy and Wales. Ooh. Mm. So seedlings. <laughs> Oh, amazing. So seedlings, retreats and holidays.com is your website. Yeah. Um, so you guys can check out everything there, all the classes, all the events, all the retreats. Um, and then your, tell me your social media, what's your handle on social media? So I'm grieve to be on Instagram and also seedlings retreats by Jen on Instagram. And then I'm Jennifer Bailey Hobbs on Facebook and seedlings. So I've got like so many different it just gets very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if you go onto the website or you go on to Seedlings Retreats and Holidays um, or Seedlings Retreats by Jen. Yeah. Beautiful. So, but I can, I'll share all my links with you if you can. Perfect. But, yeah. We'll um, link those, link yeah. those up. And wow. Like, thank you so much for sharing. I know this will be so inspiring for so many people. There's so many people on that boat of like, whoa, I'm shifting out of this and I'm starting to heal. And like, what am I going to do with all this? And you've done it you know, Mm. and it's, I know that will be so inspiring to so many people. It's entirely possible to heal. And, you know, if you want to create a business around it, create a business around it. If not, like don't shortchange yourself on that journey, continue to explore, continue to dive into what's possible, you know, teach it to your family, teach it to your, Mm -hmm. your friends. You know, I, Mm -hmm. when I used to live in Utah, I've moved, so I don't have my cold plunge in Hawaii anymore, but I used to invite friends over to cold plunge and infrared sauna, you know, I'm like, come over and cold plunge with me. (laughs) My family turned up at Boxing Day all with their their trunks. They all wanted to get in the ice on Boxing Day. Christmas yeah. day I was in there with my stepdaughter and it's just wonderful and I think that what is just so powerful is that when you start to care about yourself then everything yeah. just seems to fall into place so my yeah. intention was two years ago I'm going to totally concentrate on my weight loss journey now I'm going to make sure that I care about what I eat and how I move and take accountability and have consistency um and I thought, and I was even saying to myself, if my business doesn't even grow, if I don't even sell one retreat space, it doesn't matter because what's important this time at the moment is me. But yes. since I've become yes. lighter, that that internal narrative has gone. I've got 95% clear headspace because I'm not constantly nice. moaning about myself internally. My business has just grown mm-hmm. and my tribe has just grown because I've got so much more capacity to serve and yeah. to heal others because I've healed I'm healing myself and as you know you love the gym I just love I get so much more dopamine from the ice the breath and the gym I mean I'm a five o'clock club dragging my husband along now you know and it's just like I wake up 20 minutes before the alarm goes off at 10 to 5 excited because it's arms day you know if somebody knew me 20 years ago that would never happen but there's so many other ways I don't need the dopamine through food anymore or through alcohol Mm -hmm. There's so many of the beautiful organic ways that you can just feel bloody amazing. Mm. Um, And anything is possible because it's a really dark place to be really overweight. It's a really, Mm. where do you begin? People have, so many people say, where do you begin when you, because I can't even lift what I've lost. Um, I was Mm. just about now. And and all I say is you just just begin at the beginning. Every day is day one. And my coach is um, the Francis diet. And he's just said day one, you know, day one each day is day one and the real uh, something I just want to share with you is just like this real light bulb moment because I always thought I was fat and when that mindset is really destructive and I can remember Scott said to me you are not fat you are carrying fat and that's an over consumption of energy and I walked and I yes. thought, oh my bloody god it's only taken me 50 years this is not, <laughs> this is not permanent yes. I can walk this off I've just yes. consumed too much energy. I can yes. walk this off. And I can remember yes. texting going, 
thank you very much. Got to go to walk, work off this energy. <laughs> oh. And I literally have worked out. I've walked 4 Beautiful. million steps in the last year. Because I've just Beautiful. walked off the energy I've overconsumed. So if anyone thinks, oh, I'm fat, you're not fat. Mm. You're carrying fat. It's temporary. Just move. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, so thank powerful. you so much for sharing. So powerful. Yeah. Yes. So thank powerful. you. Thank you so much, Jen, for um, just going on your journey. You know, it starts with us. We can, you know, that's, it's whenever I hear, you know, these ambitions of like, I just want to help people, blah, blah, blah. I just want to help people, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, just help yourself, blah, blah, blah. Just help yourself, blah, blah, blah. As much as you possibly can. And that will just start to happen. Right. (laughs) So thank Mm. you so much for doing that and for building what you've built and for just being a light to the world and for sharing your message with us today. We'll link up your website, social medias, and then also um, the source app. So you can guys can find her along with many other breathwork experts from all over the world. So uh, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you so much, Tara. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm.